I got a serious video here. All right. Um, you know, I might, I might start crying when I talk about this. Okay. Am I, when I say this, do you have a degree that you would say that social media played a big role in getting Trump to win? Social media changed the world dramatically since 2004, five, five, six, right? Right? It did? Social media? Right? Ever since Facebook came online, right? Okay. I'm going to have a story to tell you. I think this might be my fault. Yeah. You believe in time travel? I hate it when people say, you know, your lives are predestined. It just absolutely pisses me off. Okay, and I'll tell you what. In 1990, I met the girl of my dreams, okay? I was dating a model, or going out with a model, okay? Didn't work out. She took me to her friend's house, another model, same modeling agency. We hit it off. Had a, okay, I'm telling you stuff you ain't supposed to know here. We had a wild night of sex, right? And then the next day, I take her up to Central City, Iowa, where I live at, up to the tower at Pennock Ridge Park. We're sitting there in my custom painted Camaro, pointed, I pull, I backed into the driveway, okay? It's snowy. This is February of 1990. These are the 16th or the 17th, okay? This guy shows up out of the middle of nowhere. Everything's covered in snow. There ain't no cars. And he shows up, and taps on her window, motions her to roll it down. And he says, you don't know how, how much effort I went to find you two. He says, you don't realize how important you are. So he starts telling us the story. He tells us about our future, and he wants to change it. Basically, he's telling us our future because he wants to change a timeline to help us to stay together, to divert it around a specific time, to avoid something in the future. The two of us, or a point in time where it can be diverted. Okay? Got an itch. All right, listen to that. Okay? I thought the guy was full of bullshit. What he said was interesting. He used names. Well, how could the guy be bullshit if he used names? Right? So anyway, Denise turns to me. I couldn't see the guy from my side. She turns to me and she says, did you set this up? He looks like you, but old. And he talks like you, too. Must be a relative. You set it up, didn't you? I said, no. She says, but he knows us. I said, yeah, that's weird. Well, anyway, hold on a second. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Before that moment when she turned my way and the guy told us everything, he said, he says, how is that? He says, you don't know how much it means to me to see everybody together and getting along again. I really miss that. And then he says, well, he says, I don't know if you understand that. He says, maybe you will in the future. He says, but I want you to know I tried my best. Don't you forget that, no matter how bad it gets. And he says, maybe I should just Maybe I should just realize I'm just an, an echo and a ghost in the past. You know, that, he, he too was an echo and a ghost in the past. And that's when she turned to me and asked me if I had set it up. Well, both of us looked back the other direction, the guy was gone. The area is wide open with snow. There's no footprints even the guy leaving. Where the hell did the guy go? Well, the events that he warned us about they played out. Exactly. Denise and I broke up. We had this horrible, like Hollywood, I call it Hollywood mobster kind of breakup. I mean, it was just absolutely horrible. The people that cause a problem in a relationship are the exact same people that he said. Okay? Now, he didn't tell me that part of it. He didn't, he was cryptic about, you know, creating something and it's my fault. My fault. Okay? But apparently I create something. And that leads to somebody else stealing it, and that leads to something else, which leads to something else, which leads to the end of society, 
and a massive war and everything goes to shit. Well, that happens. It's happening now. Okay. 1993, the World Wide Web became available. Okay. The Mall of America had just opened up. My good female friend, she went to the Mall of America all excited and she contracted spinal meningitis and all that stuff. Well, they, she died. In fact, they, you know, she died and they brought her back to life. But she was left paralyzed. So I get back to her house and I see her when she gets home and she can't, she can't walk, you know. She can't even sit up on a bed. She has to hang on to me. And I said, she said, what am I going to do? How am I going to live? And I said, Tiffany, no matter what, I said, I'll always be here for you. I'll never leave. I said, I promise I'll work it out. I'll figure out a way to make the world a better place for you with less barriers and more opportunities. And I'll bring the world to you if I have to. So I started working on a plan. Now that was the beginning of the beginning of the World Wide Web. Now on another night, she showed me that she liked to go to chat sites. Okay, so I was trying to create a plan to make all this work to help her. I had a sister that worked for Frank Magan Associates, marketing research company. Now Denise, she did advertising and design for the Cedar Rapids Gazette, and Dwayne, he was um, a computer hacker and programmer. Okay, and then there's me. Okay, I grew up poor and during the, the farm crisis and helping people. Okay, so I tried to take all of this and put it all together. Okay, so I started working on the plans to make, create an internet social site. But it was too early. You couldn't do it back in 1993 or 94 or even 95. Because you had to have digital cameras, otherwise you're going to have to scan something. Right? Computers were too slow. Internet connections, most of them were too slow. Storage costed too much, right? I worked for a company supervising convicts on work release with gigantic servers, okay? So I was asking people all these questions to learn how to create this business plan, okay? I eventually took a job working for a security company at a company that melted down currency for the Federal Mint, okay? I was offered a job as a security advisor in South Korea, okay? I turned everything, I left the job, turned all of it down because I knew it was time to get this online. But then I got involved with the government in May of 2000, okay? Now I tried for like a year, year and a year and a half, two years to try to find somebody to help me do the coding. I had no problem borrowing the money to get it started, but I couldn't find anybody to help me do the coding in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, okay? I tried to ask my friend Dwayne, he didn't get, wasn't interested, he said just, the idea was too big and stupid. It wouldn't work. I said, if you can't do the coding, find me somebody. He wouldn't help, okay? So eventually, my stepdad, he was in bad health and he was about ready to die, and I took a job close to home at a local landfill, and I got involved with a 9-11 pre-event. May of 2000, a year and a half before 9-11. And then after that, that just pretty much ruined everything because I became this monitored witness where I had to you know, they had to monitor my phone, my internet, me 24 hours a day, anybody coming out of my home. Well, in 2003, they eased up enough. I was able to do something. So I let Marcel Elliott Zuckerberg stay at my home. You know him as Mark Zuckerberg. He got in trouble at Harvard, remember that? But he bought himself a school bus, and he was going to live out of it. They called it a schoolie at Iowa State. So I let him come to my house with it. Take parts out of some campers. I was parting out. Okay. Now, that's not something I suggest to do to make money because I didn't make that much. But, you know, it gave me a little bit of money in my pocket, right? So I let Mark stay at my home. He was on the internet, a friend of my friend in the same hacking club. Okay. I don't know how well they associated. Okay. But they knew each other. Okay. And I asked him, I said, if you can help me do the coding. Mark offered to do the coding, and instead of me borrowing money to hire a coder, he wanted to be a coder to do the coding for a little some of the 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 profit. He would, you know, that would be his investment. Okay, but instead of borrowing the money that I needed, besides, he found me the investors I needed. Okay, now that <coughs> Mark Howison got involved, which is his friend and mentor, and suggested that you know what. Lynn just wants to get this going to help his friend. Why don't you just offer him a return percentage and then, you know, Mark start it 
right, Mark Zuckerberg, and then he just pays me a return percentage and then I don't have to deal with it. So we hashed out a deal, we worked it out. It was pretty high, Mark said. I didn't think it was that high, I thought it was more than fair. So he had two options. He had to pay me 15% return outright for everything he made, off use my intellectual work, okay? And then he had to donate to free clinics, shelters, and help find a cure for neuromuscular diseases, okay? But if he didn't do that, he owed me 20% of everything that he made off using my work, and then I would take that large percentage, that's a lot of money. Do you know how much money it's made? And it would fund free clinics and shelters all over the United States, right? And help find a cure for neuromuscular diseases, because if you remember the history of 2003, the MDA telethon was coming to an end because Jerry Lewis wouldn't do it no more. That makes sense? Okay. A deal was struck, and then at the end, Mark asked me if I would say on the video recording that I gave my intellectual work and all my rights to him, right? And that way he could create a new creation history where nobody would know that I was the one that created the intellectual work. And I said, oh, hell no. If I do that, you're going to screw me and I don't owe you a dime. No. So we got mad and he destroyed all the recordings. Okay, or tried to. Destroyed most of them. He dumped the cassette and popped and he dripped open the back of my advanced camera and formatted my digital camera. He wouldn't give me a copy of the CD. I don't have the CD, Tony CD, new for that year. Okay. So anyway, on the last day, Mark managed to get Priscilla to distract me and he stole everything and tore out of here in that bus went back to Harvard and said, looky, the, my notebook and my portfolio, looky, somebody gave me the plan for a billion dollars in a social society and so much more, I'm so lucky, right? But he didn't get it given to him, he stole it from my home. 2006, you know, the battle of Facebook began, Mark Howitz and Zuckerberg called me, demanding me to give a statement that I gave him my intellectual work and they also want me to give a statement that I told, instructed Mark to create a new creation history because as the author, I wanted to remain hidden. I said, oh, hell no. But the government that was monitoring me was still listening into my phone. And they offered me uh, a solution to, the, to that. They were going to give Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Howitzen the same treatment that the 9-11 witnesses got. And I said, no, so they didn't. So all these years, I've been trying to expose what happened, okay? So it's interesting that that guy that was there in, uh, um, I'm thinking here now, okay? February of 1990 was right, everything as he said. I, I left something out, it was very important. So anyway, going back in time now to uh, February of 1990, when I took Denise to my home to meet my parents, my car was clean, okay? And when we, and I opened up the door for her and she got out, the guy apparently had dropped a yellow stiff sheet of paper with perfectly written dates on it inside the door. When she looked my direction and it fell inside, so when we opened up the door, it fell out. And I picked it up and I said, is this yours? She says, no. And you know, we couldn't <coughs> figure out what those, what those numbers were because we're in 1990, right? So it's a number, you know, like, you know, like let's say it's a 08, you know, August, you know, and then, a, you know, a date and then a year, right? Let's just give an example, right? So that's what it was. It was day, month, year, day, month, year. The whole sheet of paper was perfectly written with dates, okay? Every one of those dates resembled an important event, right? Tiffany, getting sick, spinal meningitis, becoming paralyzed. 9-11 pre-event, Mark Zuckerberg, at my home, steals my intellectual work. Mark Zuckerberg uses that intellectual work, creates Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Howitzen calls me, asking for me to give a statement that I gave him my initial work and instructed him to create a new creation history. What other ones do you think were on there? 
thus today. Trump, thus. I don't know what to say. I don't say what's possible, but I'm going to say something. I think it is possible. I hate to say it. I should have held hope that me letting, you know, creating that and Mark stole it is going to lead to the end of the world and a world war and the end of the United States. I hate to say that, you know. But I tell you, when I became that 9 11 proven witness, I witnessed some things that were unbelievable that I, you know, at the event, um, the double agent described, listen to this very closely, aliens. He says, you can't see them with your naked eye, but you can see them with the camera or you can see in reflections in some glass with a certain wavelength, like a mirror or something, right? And he said that they are manipulating society and, and causing conflict and, you know, they're basically getting off on it. And they portray themselves as gods, and at once they were portraying themselves as our gods. And in fact, they still portray themselves as some gods for some foreigners, right? And I thought, oh, bullshit. You know, and he said it went along with this ancient alien theory, okay? Bullshit. And he says, well, you know what? Now that you're involved in this, he says, more than likely, you'll be seeing them eventually too. I said, oh, bullshit. You want to know something? The weekend after that pre-event wasn't just me there was three of us that seen him just exactly what i said we were using a camera i bought a camera i went on vacation i bought a camera first digital camera when i brought it home the camera wouldn't work the image was swirling around and i'm going like this and i'm taking photos just trying to get the darn thing to work and then we connected it to my computer and my friend dave was on vacation with me he yanks the cord out stop he goes, you're not going to believe this. What that guy said, they're on that. I said, what? Hooked it back up to the computer. Now, I filled the whole camera full. Every one of those had those aliens on it. There was a shorter ones, and there was a taller one that had like a, like a thing over his head, like, like a robe or something, and it was gray colored. Kind of, um, there's a name for it, but you know, kind of, monochrome is looking, I guess you call it, you know. And the smaller ones had symbols on them, and they were projecting something outward, which is what was messing up my camera, making the image all distort and swirl. And they weren't just standing in one spot. The tall one, he walked from one room into the other one and turned around while the other ones that were small were projecting whatever it was to distort the camera, okay? I posted one of those online and I got a specific warning, never ever do it again. The FBI came to my house and let me file a report over all the death threats because when I became the monitored witness, I got death threats but people were dying. Lots of people were dying to keep this secret. They took all the photos of those aliens, exception of one that was not very good that I hid in a book. Okay. Some of those photos are so crystal clear that you can see what looks like pupil, their starburst looking eyes, look like the pupil in the eyes. You can see the bumps on their skin. It's crystal clear, perfect, holy shit. At that 9-11 pre-event, he was talking about how these aliens were supposed to be helping these people that were involved in this 9-11, okay? And they're going to help them manipulate time. Now, if you're one of the people that gets abducted at night, gets visited, you'll notice that the clock is off by 15 minutes to two hours between three and four, somewhere in that time period, right? It could be one and four, but usually three or four, okay? Right? So they're going to try to change time, but... As humans think it's going to, and one, Republic, one, one political party thinks it's going to help them try to overtake the country, which is what's happening now. But in reality, what they're going to do is they're going to help the aliens destroy the infestation, which is us. Okay? So the possibility of me being responsible and Denise at that point and this timeline with that social media helping Trump get in just 
look at the what has happened and you'll realize there's a very good possibility it ain't just a story. Okay? So I've been trying to prove all these years what Mark had done, had ripped me off and created this new fake creation industry. And nobody will listen to me. The Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Department of Justice avoid me because they blacklisted me after being involved with them and they have a hands-off policy. The hands-off policy is they won't help you because they do that to protect security interests through plausible deniability. Okay? Now, I have learned so much from that that it happened at that pre-event. Okay? Genetic genocide, we knew it was coming. Okay? Oh, the, the, the big thing here. I got to tell you about it. This is big. Okay? So, have you ever heard that, that, that um, the terrorist, that, that double agent, gave me jihad and Illamonte playing cards? Did you know that they've been taken off the market and they're famous because they predicted all these events? If you're around the aliens, I don't know how it works, but they project thoughts into your head where you can see the future. They control time, remember, right? So it allowed somebody like who created those cards to write those cards. But he showed me, another person, another person, it was that case, there was three, yeah, three of us at the free event that we started having these premonistic visions, okay? Each one of them, from our point of view, each one of us, each one of them allowed each one of us to write a journal Bar of the future. Everything that we've seen, that we wrote down, has been playing out and coming true. It's leading up to this really bad stuff coming. Okay? Be prepared. All right? There was somebody from the government that was here that was in a service. I'm not going to let real too much. He read what I had wrote, but a lot of it had gotten destroyed. Okay? But he had read what I had wrote, and it took him more than an hour to read this. In fact, it took him close to several hours to read what I had typed. He was going through it pretty fast. He turned three different shades until it looked like the life had been sucked out of him. And the guy started shaking and trembling, and tears started coming out of his eye. And he goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He goes, oh, my God. He says, I cannot believe this is happening. He says, there is no way in hell that you could have wrote that unless you were on the inside and you know the military protocol and you were at these places. He says, you wrote about things. There is no way in hell, no way in hell you ever could have wrote that. He says, you describe things so perfectly. He says, he says I don't know what to do. He goes, oh, shit. People can't see this. People can't know about this. Well, my computer got hacked. I managed to save a lot of it. And it's been playing out. That guy was in a service. He was on active duty in Iraq and some other places. And uh, I don't know what his rank is, but it affected him that bad. But what's to say the government managed to get most of it? Okay. They don't want people to know what was written. And it's interesting how perfect it was because Dave, that's one of them, that was a witness, right? But he was at a distance, but they were there. Dave was at a distance, but he was there at the pre-event, pre -event, event, and so was another one, Tim, okay? Yeah, I revealed the names, okay? But Dave had seen a future where he would eventually be a bus driver at a school, at a school he didn't even, was never at. He's a bus driver now for that school in a place he never lived before, a school he'd never seen, okay? The school that we have here in Central City, Iowa, was gone. And a new one on the far end was built in its place, okay? I'm going to give you a little example of what we... Okay, we knew about the we knew about the genetic genocide. The guy had talked about it, but we knew by what we call guideposts. Guideposts are something we wrote about and then we've seen it, so then we can cross it. That's a guidepost. 
all right? But it's much easier to find guideposts by looking for infrastructure, buildings, roads, additions on houses, right? That is the best way to find the guideposts so we know where we're at, okay? I hope the stuff doesn't come true. I hope, okay? But there was an interesting point within that and mine, James and mine and Tim's, where people were like in a, um, like, like the town become like an imprisonment, okay? You couldn't leave, you couldn't operate a car, you could operate a bicycle. Food was scarce, they killed off your fruit trees. Um, the river pretty much dried up and trees grew, you know, it became a crook basically, and a lot of trees grew, okay? And then uh, they did everything they could to make your life miserable and starve you off and kill you. And then eventually they had the whole town all marching around all these blocks, eventually going into the school. And then there was flashes of like lightning and boom, 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 boom. And then there was row off dumpsters with clothes in one and bodies in another. When they got close to the, the, uh, got close to the uh, gymnasium, everything was divided off. Younger generation went one direction, take off your clothes, throw them in the dumpster, any jewelry or precious metals you have that's set on a table and somebody takes it. And there's somebody there with a syringe and then some people get sh apparently shot. That's probably pretty damn bad, doesn't it? What were some other ones that we see? Uh, we saw a lot of what looked like a natural disaster. You know, like uh, buildings where like water had gone over it and you know, they're filled full of sand, you know. Most of the building for it had been flattened, okay. Um, I hope it don't reach that point, okay. Um, but Dave's seen that from his point of view at a school well, he's at. Tim had seen it. I had seen it. But there's an interesting thing, too. Now, Sam was working at a landfill there for a while. And the landfill dozed down the recycling building. And the landfill wasn't going to be open that much longer. And they built this new multi-million dollar structure. Recycling building. With catwalks. Like for gunners. Up above, like for a prison. And then where the recycling goes, they made it gigantic, okay? With slick walls that are high up and doors that close, so once you in it, you can't get out, okay? And then in the middle, between the two sides, is where they put big, long semi-trailers in, okay? They only use less than half of it. Okay, now in that 9-11 pre-event, they were talking about creating from the stuff, paperwork that I'd seen. By the way, the government papers I'd seen has signatures of people. I got to see a lot of this, you know. They had plans for building places like this, okay, at landfills. And what do you know? We have one of those, County Home Road, Lynn County, Iowa, in Mar Lynn County Home Road in Marion in Lynn County, Iowa, okay? Look it up on the internet. If you don't believe me, look it up. There it is. People have asked, why would you build a multi-million dollar recycling center with large catwalks going from end to end like a prison? With lookout, looks like lookout towers, why? They couldn't give an answer. I just told you. I sure the hell hope that I'm not responsible for this, but I'm telling you, after everything I've learned, it's possible. Now, I got something else I want to say here. Um, the girl that was with me, which is all grown up now, Denise. Okay, I'm even going to say the last name. Denise Snuggle from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. You know, we had this horrible breakup, and then I found out later that you're pregnant. We don't know if it was my kid or not. And then on a, apparently the 16-year-old, she turned 16 years old, you contacted me, 
and my life didn't turn out the way apparently you expected it, you know, all right? I don't know if these events that played out were set in motion on purpose. I hope not. I mean, that really would piss me off, you know? And I don't know if any weird things happened in your life that could justify it. this was all predestined. And all I have to say is I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. I, I hope it wasn't. But there's a very good possibility that our misery was all pre-planned. If you get a chance, remember back to that time and think about it. Because that guy used names. And you know, Scott was a big problem. Remember what he said? And then there was that piece of paper with all those dates. We were used, it seems like. Wow, that really sucks, doesn't it? And you know what? It really didn't turn out good for me. I'm dirt poor now. I have Emory Dreyfus muscular dystrophy and Shrogan's. My life isn't going to live much longer. I'm losing my Obamacare because of Trump. You know? But I hope you, anybody that's out there starts paying attention to any videos that I stuck on there because... You need to start stocking up on food. You need to start going to the recycling centers and look for things that you could use, okay? I was mentioning this to a guy the other day that found me, he watched his videos on the internet, looked for me on the internet to see what I had for sale and came to me to buy something just to meet me, to ask me questions about this, okay? So, like, if you go to a recycling center and you see, like, chlorine, pick it up. Why? Get yourself some 50-gallon barrels, put spigots in the bottom of them, and put some 4 by 4s on the bottom, make rain barrels. Because the world takes a shitter. Like I said, like I said at the beginning, I prefer to use a stool, right? That way your rainwater don't go bad. You can use it to dip it out and flush your stool, you know? Depending on, don't want to put too much chlorine in it if you're going to use it for food, you know, you're going to boil it, you know. But that's one, one thing you need to do. You need to start finding supplies. I hope the world don't go take a shitter. But if the wars happen, like I assume it's going to work, North Korea is already over there helping Russia going against Ukraine. South Korea will engage North Korea. Japan will support South Korea. The U.S., should support South Korea and Japan before Trump takes office. But when, don't be too surprised, or if the United States helps Russia and the United States and Russia become, you know, like this. But Trump plans on taking us out of the UN, but you ain't gonna want that because if Trump takes us out of the UN, the UN puts sanctions on us, which will wind up making Snickers candy bars, 25 bucks and a and a, a stick of butter, $10. And you won't be able to hardly find any food, look, try and something you need, okay? But you need to understand something. You see there's alliances and groups within that supported the Republican Party, okay? The assets are everywhere worldwide, okay? Don't be too surprised if the assets, they're gonna lead to your death and genocide are also in the United Nations, okay? Notice these strange fires we've had. Have you noticed the uh, Hawaii? Okay, maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it wasn't done. Maybe it just happened by an accident. Kind of odd though, they'd paint everything blue and the laser didn't affect it, right? Okay. But they plan on knocking the population down by a long ways, a long ways. And even if you're one of the people that says, oh, you know, I'm middle class, or I'm above middle class, but I'm not quite upper class, or upper class, you're not that important. Believe me, I was on the inside seeing this. You're not that important. You're all going down. Good luck, people. Find people that you can trust, no matter what. Because I'll tell you something, if you got a war, you want that person next to you 
that will stand in front of you and protect you. And if he has to, he'll throw himself on a grenade. If your friends aren't that good, go find yourself some new ones.